What's up, everyone? I'm Ricky Rich Idea here, and welcome back Alright, so we gotta pick more stuff. <clears throat> Another poem. Candy. Yes, I love candy. Candy is amazing and special. Um, Shane. Bouncy! I love being bouncy, 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 Kawaii Desert! Name, explode, nightgown, charm. I like charm. Marriage, sugar. I'm full of sugar. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I used to be super hyper to the point where I said, uh, <laughs> I injected sugar in my veins. Yeah. That didn't go well with a lot of people. Um, cry, heart, cheeks, desire. Giggle! I love giggle. Ew. I like skirts. <clears throat> Fantasy. Uh, I love marshmallows. Wow, I cook everything for her. Uh, I love horror, though. I do. I like being scared. I mean, I hate it, but I like it. Email, waterfall, secretive, bliss, headphones. Uh, I guess headphones. A puppy! Papa. Why? 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 Playground broken, unending. I like silly. Lollipops sing. Infallible inferno ocean dash. Lollipops. Imagination. Oh yeah. Bunny. Donkey donkey. I like bunny. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what the last one I picked. <clears throat> Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I don't have that. I got a, a mouse. Entering the club room, the, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Kendra! Oh, fuck it. Hi, Kendra! Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> Always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Ah, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly gave us. Eh. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah! Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Kendrick to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved in involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mysterious little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough... Fair enough retribution. <laughs> uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's the fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. 
retribution. Fair. Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, you wouldn't have come if, there, if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> I know where something smacks Siori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was it? A cookie? Sure enough, a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Siori glances around. Is this a miracle? <laughs> it's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. <laughs> actually, actually, that was that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki! So nice of you. I'm so happy. Sorry, hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sorry, rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Oh, but look. Sorry, suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah? Why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. So I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sorry gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge the Ori off her. Oh. Sorry suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> a mouthful of Sierra tries to waste safe to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sierra that Natsuki glances around? Monica isn't in the classroom. Ugh. Where's Monica anyways? Good qu good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. It's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh, you don't think she has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, that's not true. That's true. Excuse me? Because only the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you like guys weren't worried or anything. Eh, Monica shows the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. boyfriend What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah, uh, <laughs> That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really... I just started recently. Always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds... That sounds cool. I also, I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Kendrick. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. I'd really love the chance to say it once I'm ready. See, in that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievi mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow has finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. It's not long before comes up. Natsuki comes up to me unexpectedly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. Pull the first volume of Parfait Girls out of my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hand and quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle MAGA all the time, you know. Just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for not being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything that you, you th you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? 
Where did the volume leave off again? I forget. Ha, huh, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found... Monica! Natsuki's voice resonates from inside the closet. Eh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Oh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in your closet. So I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little bit. It's all still there, I just organized it a bit. Ugh! The top shelf was far above Natsuki's head. <laughs> she makes a futile hop trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez, this is so inconvenient. I'm moving these all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Uh, Natsuki? There's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get it myself. Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? I'm... I mean, I knew it. Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops into the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of the collapsible design. Uh, uh. Care careful? I know what I'm doing. Standing on the stool, Natsuki's, fingertip Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. So it begin would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki being stubborn as usual. Uh, uh. Natsuki uses his fingertips to scoop one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Yeah. Box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls onto the floor. Stool wobbles. Ah! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds into the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it. I don't want your help, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces herself past me, out of the closet. Let's see. Classroom chairs uh, have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit in the closet. Ah! Aha! Press over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. Aren't those swivel chairs? That's not smart. Sorry, I had to move around a little bit. Because, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, she rolls on in on its wheel. Yep. She rolls its on its wheel back over to the closet. Ah! It's a little dangerous since the chairs have swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Nasuka climbs into the chair and then slowly balances her feet. Sorry, I'm like moving around, so it's more convenient. Uh. She refuses my help, so I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway to simply watch. Click. There. Ah, there we go. See, I can easily do it. Natsuki grabs the stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Wah! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it who told me not to help? It was you. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Oh, man, my foot's falling asleep, and I don't like it. Ah, oh, let me take a swig of my hot verners. Yes, hot verners. Delicious. Good for the throat. Ah. Delicious. Uh, my foot's falling asleep still, so I'm, like, trying to, like, mess with it a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Oopsie. Oopsie. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. Mm. I can almost see a her skirt. Gah. Force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. When she realized, when she realizes I'll be dead. Huh. Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl, girl's box set and easily, easily the largest one on the shelf. Ugh, heavy. Hey Kendrick, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry up and take this one. Uh. But then I have to let go of the chair. It's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. All right. Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Ah! Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, the box. Wh what are you looking at? Ah! Yeah, she realizes that I just saw her skirt. Another picture. <laughs> You're trying to look at my... my... Natsuki's legs shake. I'm not. I was just... Natsuki, don't try it. Don't try to move. Just give me the box. Perv! You set me up. Go away. Get out. But I'll do it myself. Uh, the chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Get out. The scene turns to chaotic, into chaos in a split second. 
chair flies under Formatsky's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands. The books go flying. I got you! Crash! The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me into the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. Ugh! My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Yeah, another picture. Ugh! Comes to her senses. Ugh. She presses her arms and need to prop herself up. Eh? Seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Ugh. Gross, gross, gross! My fist, my fist pounds into my chest and Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sick out? Everything okay over here? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica, see what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club member or something? Gee, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, oh, and one more thing. It seems like you must be club member is a total pervert, so I hope you're happy. I did it! Somehow it was impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Somebody says that quietly. It's like I'm off the hook. Oh no, my. Uh. I look down. Natsuki's kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease um, along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. It must have landed on the pages. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. So then she gives up, slams the book shut, and throws it into the floor. So continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. Cries. Natsuki, are you? No. Natsuki's voice squeaks. No. I see the tears on her face. Oh. I'll help you get the crease out, okay? It's practically my fault, so she shakes her head, still looking down. No. I don't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it all out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... Every day. It's so hard. I just want to come to the club and fall silent again. I can't press her. So I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help you clean this up. I move the rest of the manga for you. Uh, pick up volume two of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help you cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started once I'm done here. Nasky looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lips quiver. You're. You're really nice to me. Huh? Sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Mm. Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. Not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I can do. Next couple of minutes are silent between us as I begin to gather the scatter books and make sure to slip them into the box in the correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, I hoist the box onto the one to put it. I get the stool. And quickly finish moving the rest of her books to the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. Hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her glaze. Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hand. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. Think about cheering me up. If you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time as I open the second volume. Natsuki moved quickly and proved laughing and pointing things out to me. Apparently sharp, making note of a lot of sub, uh, subtle, repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has a good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual. It's time to share our poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even, even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> Told you. Yeah, yeah. I turned my seat and slipped the book into my bag. Uh, let's go back to Natsuki, because she's the one I'm going after. <laughs> Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me at the back of the poem. <sighs> I'm sorry about that. That's, that's the burners talking. By now, she must have read it more than once. <laughs> Is it bad? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously, you think I'd let enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that, if in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you. you. Uh, Nasuke's face freezes like she just realized something. You... You're trying to impress me? Nasuki Fisher scans her eyes over my poem one more time, and the 
the foam slips out of her hand and flutters to the floor. I have to use the bathroom. Red face and Asuke quickly runs out of the room. Hey, Kendra, did you do something, Asuke? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No. I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Asuke. Hmm? I was in the phone line. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I mean, <clears throat> not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well, right? Are you sure you're not cheating, Kendrick? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, wait, like, I'm, like, out of the box. <laughs> Like, <laughs> jeez, is that, is that a break in the fourth wall type thing? <laughs> no, it's certainly not. <sighs> I still haven't recovered from my throat problem, but, eh, what am I gonna do? Alright. So how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't, oh, you don't need to answer that. I, it was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us had noticed her reaction in the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Uh, you should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know? It's a bad habit of doing that. Eh? Kendrick wrote this poem. And no, we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? Mm. Natsuki freezes. Apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Kendrick is done sharing his poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyways. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this if you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Natsuki. I'll give you the poem, but that's still not fair to Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Kendrick is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. <sighs> my feet. Cause I'm like, I'm like sitting crisscross on my bed and it's like killing my feet. <sighs> Fine. Let's give return to my poem. It's not that she's alone. To like it though. Anyways, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy. Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. I have a feeling I might... I might already understand this poem. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking with people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends started to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. Doesn't matter if she keeps it private. Doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world's better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. work um so yeah i had a lot of friends and uh then once i hit first grade after they found out i was like a, a nose picker and stuff like that um a lot of people pull, pushed away from me because um you know it's like ew that's gross nobody wants to be around with a nose picker blah 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 blah, blah, blah type thing and um so i mean this is kind of when i'm reading like this it's what it kind of it's like you know there's this amy who's really nice you know, she has some of the same interests, like a love song that's really popular and it makes, you know, makes the person's heart pound, like it's beautiful, but she still likes spiders, and that's gross, and I, I can't put myself past, you know, that this girl may be a really cool friend for me and something like that, because she likes spiders, so I kind of get it. <clears throat> Not bad, right? Quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday was way too short. I was just warming up. 
hope you didn't think that it was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. And sometimes you can explain complicated issues the most with their analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree with the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of. Afraid if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. That just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone, it can and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of people can too. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, enjoying sharing my writing with you, so so consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> Thanks for being honest. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Jeez. Just look forward to tomorrow, okay? Alright, I will. Sorry. I'll go to Sayori. Oh! I like this one, Kendrick. It has some nice feelings in it. I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> it's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out whether poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. It makes me feel things. Then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure if exactly that's how it works. Then again, oh no, then again, I'm conveying my feelings in a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Uh, uh, you want to write something for, for, for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you always think about other people. You need to think about yourself for once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh, well, I, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can see you're liking something sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. What the fuck? All right. <laughs> Sorry, that's an unexpectedly po poetic. Eh, is it? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Kendrick. I should go write that down then. Y you can read my poem now, okay? <coughs> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine and all rubbing together like bundles of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my finger goes... What the fuck, Sayori? Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. Blow the dust off my lap, off my bottle caps. Doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another. One after the other. Holding a mouch to each my friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. 
They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who weren't smiling. They are all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, echo, echo inside my head. What the fuck, Sayori? What? Holy crap! Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really touched with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe it must be because you used to be being cheerful. Well, never mind. Thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I, f I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing is like magic. You got pretty passionate about this one, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yay! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry, I already had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it. Uh, no more than a week later. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay. I gotta, like, move my feet because it's killing me. All right, Yuri, you're... she's gonna hate my poem. Ah, uh, it's my turn. Let's see how it compares to yesterday. Hmm, I see. It's a bit different. I expect you for trying different things, Kendrick. Were you inspired in Anaski's poem or Sierra's poem? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. I write them for myself, not for anyone else. Ah. Oh. So I don't really need people to like them or anything. Yuri. Eh. Sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I'd probably just do a terrible job. I see. I'm sorry. Stupid mind. I like to do that sometimes. Anyways, you don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain, like, turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader into the mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. This is the poem you wrote for today. Yuri nods and timidly hands me your poem. The raccoon. Oh, that's cursive. Well, fancy writing. It's not cursive, but <sighs> happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for the guilty for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by, a, by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. I'm well aware that the raccoon that, I, that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of the cutting of the knife was the symptom? Bread was my hungry curiosity, the raccoon an urge. The moon. Inseminate. <sighs> Inseminate? <sighs> its phase and reflects that much more of light off the cutting knife. The very same light that glistened in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to follow me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently so the bread is oh my bread is always handy every time i brandish my cutting knife the raccoon shows me its excitement a rush of blood classic paranoia paranoia and conditioning i slice the bread and i feel myself again what um um i was a little more daring with this one than yesterday i can see that it's a lot more metaphorical i don't know if it's my fault but i can begin to imagine what this poem is about that's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poems as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Hmm, that's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for strange interests? She... she did? Yeah. 
She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. Sh she's right! Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have a lot in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Now, oh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry. I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for share sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I probably would hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could sit in the front of the classroom. Is it about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets so we can give them out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. That doesn't tell us what we're going to be doing for this event. Oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each one of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Siori's putting it all on posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> oh man, I, thought I gotta like move again. Because it's like, ah! Okay. Okay. <sighs> Who's been coloring poster holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad, uh, that bad of idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. That Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. Oh my gosh, my foot. My foot. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. I'm so I'm sorry. <laughs> but, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put in a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone the literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding a new horizons. Oh my god, my foot is like deathly asleep right now. Oh, wake up, wake up, and having fun. Uh, yeah, that's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others to inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you in here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes... And if all it takes is standing in the front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sorry looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh, okay, fine. I guess I'll have to go over, get it over with. All right, whew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? She glances over it. I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move into the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poems in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook and spits the poem she has in mind for herself. It stands behind the podium. The title of this poem, The Way I Fly. <clears throat> Reciting her poem. Her clear, comfortable voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line and recite to bring the word to life. Is it something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I'll glance around. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sorry he looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finished reciting. The four of us applaud. It takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to get it set a good example. Are you ready to go sit next, Yuri? I'll go next. What? Yuri? 
fired up for some reason. Yuri clutches a seed of paper between her hands. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem's called... Glances each one. You can do it. You can do it, Sayori. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. The voice shakes and starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting up so much effort? Gets past the first couple of lines and her voice changes. It's almost like what happened when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Covering words transform her into sharp syllables in a fierce and fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse of, into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealing inside her head. Suddenly she finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards. We give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were just caught off guard. Much forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, guess I'm next then. Siri hops out of her seat. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, uh, ah, ha, ha. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Siori. I, it got a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine yourself reciting it to yourself in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. I see, I see. Okay then. Siori begins filling begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem is an aimlessly cheery like Siori is. It's sincere and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Siori's voice, I'll give it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Siori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more more deeply into someone I thought I knew through, through and through. Siori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Zayori. <laughs> even Kendrick liked it. I guess it's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely, but it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Try to get back into it. <clears throat> Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. It might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. Well, that's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everybody. <laughs> then next, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> Don't make me go before Kendrick. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyways. Might as well let Kendrick lower everyone's standards a little more before I have to do it. Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, faking, feeling me tear or set my prone. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. But that one, I receive applause and... Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. It's something that will improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. Just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going... Begrudgingly gets over... Gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts with her sour attitude disappears a little. She's a little unenthused in her poem. Her poem has a rhyme and rhyme to it. What? While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, you do at least feel prepared to recite a poem in front of other people. I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. Way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for the people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. To think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that it's just how it is so well i guess in that case you won't have much to worry about for the festival that said i want to thank everyone for coming through it might be hard but i do hope you all have an idea of what it is like now 
Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Gee, jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me feel really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll, be finish, we'll finish planning tomorrow. And then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as the story of Monica, but I'll do my best to get through. It's for the sake of the club. And I'm impressed. Impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Eh. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Must be nice. A little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Now walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. Today, Sayori's Suyori, being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Hmm? Oh, sorry, I was spacing out. <sighs> no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like, I like how we get to, I mean, fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? Kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh! I would walk home with her. Oh! Walking home with Natsuki, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, I think it would... I would be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ah, you admitted it. Jeez. Not even point of speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. Can't figure out how you seeing thing how you're seeing things in your head right now. You know, playing this, I've already seen the image of Sayori. Because I've seen it floating around, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I really don't like it at all. So I'm going to continue. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, Sorry. Everyone's different. Nobody in our club is, repla is a replacement for you. Hmm? If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. It was kind of her fault for trapping me in with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take it away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the fest was only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Oh! I'm gonna end it here. Oh, I messed up. And I know I did. I just did. Oh. Well, I'm gonna end this here. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Ricky Rich 98. Telling you guys to stay freaky, my friends. Till the next episode. Bye bye.